This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen? You want to be miserable? Stay home. Go in the closet until you change. <laughs> Nothing worse than a miserable Christian or one that ain't drunk. Amen? We need to be filled with the Spirit and drunk in the Spirit all the time. That's where the joy of the Lord is. Because see, the joy is of the Lord is our strength. Amen? The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might and not our own. Awesome. Mighty things that are happening. We don't want to miss what God's doing these days. And we certainly don't want to miss the bus out of this, country, out of this world. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everybody get touched this morning? Refreshed in His presence? You don't get refreshed if you haven't repented. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter three. Glory. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Everybody there? But know this, that in the last days, are we in the last days? If you don't know that, you know now. Amen. Perilous times will come. Are they come? <laughs> Man, they're here. This is just the beginning of it. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pressure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power or the deep things of God. And from such people do what? Turn away. For these are the sort that creep into households and make captives of gullible women and men. They load them down with sins and they lead them away with various desires or lusts. They're always learning, but they're never able to be free. Does everybody understand that? They're always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth which frees them. So they learn, 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 and learn. They never get free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, is freedom. Does everybody get it? See, you can have all the knowledge in the world. You can memorize this Bible and still be bound. Because without the presence of God, you can't perform this. You can't practice it. You can't put it into place. And again, for me and you, the presence of God is vital. It's everything. It should be everything. The presence of God is your fulfillment. Amen? Again, when I was a drug addict and maniac out there, it wasn't until the Lord showed up and I realized that he was my fulfillment. I realized that everything I was ever looking for was God's presence, even though I didn't know it. And you keep pressing in, you keep pressing in. It's like busting through a rubber wall. But as you praise and worship, you bust through eventually. You'll have that bust when all of a sudden, boom, something happens. Whoa, you get touched by God. See, God wants to make himself real to you. He's not trying to put you in a place where he's not real. But you must sow your way into that place. You must cooperate with the Spirit of God to get to that place. And then there's a visitation. There's a revelation. There's an impartation. Things begin to change in your life. And once you've tasted the goodness of God and that presence that is overwhelming, love, and pure, nothing else can fulfill you. Nothing. It's when individuals don't maintain and they backslide. Then other things become more fulfilling. 
than God's presence. And it's so important for me and you in everything we do. That's why we must maintain everything that's going on in the, in the presence of God. It says here in verse 8, Now as uh, Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Is there any people out there resisting truth? Heck yeah, man. The whole Democratic Party. Amen? The liberals, they're all resisting truth. Everybody's men-pleasing. They got their own religion. Me, myself, and I. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further. In other words, he just said they're always learning, learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Of free. They can only progress so far because there's limitations on their life. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you be what? You ha be careful to follow the doctrine, manner of life and purpose, faith, long-suffering and love, perseverance, persecutions and afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Icium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Again, Paul was kind of warning us of what was getting ready to happen. Prophetically, he saw things. Amen? He says all oh, these people are always learning. Able, they're, they're not able to comprehend the true reality of God's kingdom. They're disapproved according to the ways of Christ. They've fallen into evil state of being. Impo imposters of righteousness and pretenders of the faith. They've been taken captive by human intellect and reasoning. No longer alert to the enemy's tactics. And that's what the Spirit is trying to reveal to us today, the area of divine alertness. Divine alertness. I know many of us have been in positions, even when driving sometimes, when all of a sudden something occurred and you go, oh my God. That, could have, that car could have hit me or whatever. And maybe you weren't alert, but God's hand was there. Amen. See, but that's where you and I must be alert. As a, a motorcycle driver, I have to be alert in every area. I have to look at every person around me, every car that's around me, and assume the worst. Now, I don't do that in the spirit, amen? Only when I'm out there driving with maniacs. Hallelujah. Especially the ones that drive the speed limit. First Timothy chapter 4. <laughs> I always say that to the Lord, why do I always get stuck behind someone that's doing the speed limit? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Everybody okay? Divine alertness. We got to be alert these days. Hello? Very alert. That means awake. People are falling asleep. The enemy's causing people to fall asleep. Verse 1, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits. Now, is a deceiving spirit a spirit that comes up to you and says, hi, I'm going to deceive you today? No, you don't even know it. And doctrines of demons, see, they're always promoting another doctrine. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. He says, deceiving spirits, they promote doctrines of demons. They're trapping people with their carnal understandings of lies having their own conscience deactivated. 
And it's deactivated by pride, self-righteousness, haughtiness. They reject conviction. And it's the Spirit of Christ that's trying to convict, convict them. And what happens, they're dulling their senses and alertness. See, that's one of the things the enemy tries to do is get you dull. He gets you to drowsy in the Spirit. If he can get you drowsy in the Spirit, you can't see things through. You can't discern things through. This is where people fall in a place of compromise, complacency, laziness. The enemy plays with all these things. And 2 Timothy 4. Hallelujah. Divine alertness. Second Timothy four, verse one. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Hallelujah. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, decree, release. You know, when you're preaching the word, you need to preach yourself. Amen? That's why you're making declarations. You're making proclamations. You're making decrees. You're speaking it out. Because what you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. People put their own labels on themselves. I can never do this. And you won't. Nobody loves me. Nobody will. Because you'll be stinking miserable. They'll want to stay away from you. Hallelujah. Preach the word. Decree the word. Be ready. Hey, does ready have anything to do with being alert? Snap, yes. Be ready. Be, be snapping ready. In season and out of season. In other words, it doesn't matter what's going on. Stay alert. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Is that happening? Yeah. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up from themselves teachers that will follow their all deceptive doctrine. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables or lies by deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Ready, watchful, endure, all connected to becoming divinely alerted at all times. We need this now. This is not something we're working for. We need this now. Now, there's a process of this, yes. In 1 Peter chapter 5. You know, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. So if you're alert, are you being able to avoid that deception? Yeah. Look at how many people are masked out there. They're veiled. They're not alert. They're deceived. They're bound by fear. 1 Peter 5. Glory. Look at how many people, they get in bondage because of debt. They weren't alert. Not able to see the end result. Not able to see things through. How many times? Don't raise your hands. How many times have we bought something and regretted it? Amen. <laughs> oh, snap. Sure looked good. In fact, you ignored all the signs that you weren't supposed to buy it. Especially that nice looking car. Even though it had a funny sound of the engine. Had three tires. Still looked good. Kept ignoring all those signs. Amen. Kept, and the, and the enemy's telling, yeah, you can just fix this, fix this, fix this. You spend the rest of your life fixing the car and it'll never run anyways. Then you go, oh, why did I buy that? Then people blame the Lord. Why did you let me buy that? 
And he's going, yo, how many signs did I give you? <laughs> Does God want you in debt? No. No. See, there's good deals and there's God deals. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to who? Your elders. You're more mature individuals. He's not talking about age here. There's nothing about age in the kingdom. Has everybody got it? It's about maturity. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means respect. And be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the what? The proud but gives grace to the humble. Remember, grace is God's plan to escape. So if a person stays bound, it's because they're not cooperating with the escape. Therefore, do what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. In other words, stand fast. Humble yourself. Wait on the Lord. You know, when something comes your way and you don't want, know what to do, don't do nothing. And don't make emotional decisions. They always get people in trouble. But I really believed, I really thought it felt so good. Bummer. Don't go on something that feels good in that arena. Those feel goods will kill you. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Be what? What's sober mean? Alert. Alert. Be what? Vigilant, which means what? Consistent. So you, can you be alert without being consistent? No. No. There's an area where you are consistent in maintaining your routine so that you can stay alert. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, like a big mouth, seeking whom he can deceive or devour. There isn't a person in here who hasn't bitten the bait of Satan. Amen? Every one of us has bitten. Some of us have bitten it multiple times. Some of us are still biting it. Must taste pretty good. I don't know. Verse 9, it says what? Resist. That's called deceptive food. Resist him steadfast. In the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So look, at everybody goes through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered, you know what? You learn by suffering. Amen? After you've learned a little bit, suffered a little bit, after you made enough mistakes, and you kicked yourself in the butt enough times, you got rebuked by the Lord, and corrected by everybody else, and you're finally, well, okay, I got it. What's going to that's going to turn into perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you so you don't do it over again. Amen? See, this is an area, if you're really alert, you're not going to do it again. The Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance all the stupid things we did. The devil wanted to do that to kill you, you know, and torment you. But the Holy Spirit will remind you, remember you did this? Come on, don't do it again. Don't touch that. I've heard him, heard him say that to me. I went to go grab, don't touch that guy. I said, whoa, what is it? He said, that's an accursed item. I said, oh, snap. It was this book I was going to, don't touch it, he said. Hallelujah. Don't touch that. He can't touch you. Amen. So in this, what's he doing? He wants to get us to a place where we are settled. Settled is, you're alert. You're not moved. Now, divine alertness is different than worldly alertness. People have human senses, amen? But God wants our senses to be turned over to the Holy Spirit so we're alert, that we can see, that we can hear, that we can sense. That's where there's a quickening in your spirit. You know, how many times have you done, we've all done something we knew we shouldn't have? Boy, everybody got quiet there for a minute. Every one of us knew that we shouldn't have afterwards. Oh, man, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Well, who told you you shouldn't? It wasn't the devil. Amen? It's the Holy Spirit trying to, 
Make a way of escape. Is everybody okay? So we must be alert by our consistency to prevent evil influence that promotes pride, self-righteousness, and separation from assembling. These are, again, that falls, people fall into this place of human intellect and reasoning that nullifies your alertness. Remember, God is trying to keep us out of the flesh and keep us in the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians chapter two, verse one. Hallelujah. First Corinthians two, chapter or yeah, chapter two, verse one. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with the excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. It's amazing. See, the flesh always tries to get to a place where I'm smarter than you. See, that's out of the head. People compete with one another. Listen, in the kingdom of God, it's not how much you know advances you. It's how much you cooperate with the spirit that advances you. Amen? In verse 6, However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Is a mature person more alert than an immature person? Yeah. Yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Through his spirit. So you better, look at this is where you got to make sure it's this Holy Spirit. For the, God, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, in the deep things of God. The deep, deep things of God come by revelation of His Spirit. It doesn't promote you. It prepares you. Amen? It prepares you and protects you in humility. That's what God's revelations do. See, there's the battle between the carnal mind and the mind of Christ. Verse 11. For what man knows the things of the man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the what? Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the carnal mind does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to them. They can't comprehend. They can't understand. That's why many people can't understand certain things that the Spirit's doing. Nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Is discernment associated with alertness? Yes. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Again, the deep things of God. Hmm. Wisdom from above compared to wisdom from beneath. Amen. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 4.
Therefore, since we have this ministry, verse 1, as we receive mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, if the truth is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? They're perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we, don't not a preach, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants, for Christ's sake. For it is the Lord God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Christ in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this what? treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen, we're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. See, the God of this age veils people, blinds them, blinds individuals. So they become dull of truth, dull of reality, and no longer alert. Some people have never reached divine alertness. And some people have fallen from divine alertness. Because they didn't maintain and be consistent. And this is where the Spirit is saying, wants to encourage us to maintain that divine place. Where we are alert, we are ready. We are discerning. We can sense. Amen? Is everybody okay? Remember, the wisdom that's from above is pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle. It's yielding to the Spirit. It's full of mercy. It has good fruits. But the Spirit that's from beneath is a deceiver. That wisdom from beneath is deceiving people. It's called carnal wisdom. And Matthew 7. Anybody there? Anybody there? Are you awake? Are you alert? Are you ready? Praise God. <laughs> you weren't convincing. <laughs> Matthew 7, 1. Let's speak it. Judge not that you be not judged. Amen? Amen. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the national grand forest in your own? Right? That means that person's blinded. He's too busy accusing everyone else of whatever, but can't see himself. Again, this is where we are in this times. This is globally. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your, own, from your eyes, and look, a plank is in mine, you hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. He says, do not give what is holy to the dogs. What's a dog? A demonized individual. Nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. The problem is people fall short. They fall away. They are not consistent at maintaining that. They expect the first knock to someone to answer the door. 
Hello? You got to beat it. Until somebody finally answers. You got to be consistent. Amen? You know, people want to drive through salvation. They want to drive through answer. It ain't going to work that way. You must cooperate with the Spirit. Why? Because He's training you so you can train someone else. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 9. Or what man is there among you if his son asks for bread and he gives him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will give him a serpent. If you then, being what? Evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who what? Ask him if they're consistent. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, you also do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. What a warning. Why? Because the lack of consistency and alertness. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You will know them by their what? Fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree, tree represents a person or a spirit, bears good fruit, but a bad tree does not bear. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cast down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will what? You're going to know them. Just because a person was bearing good fruit at one time and now bearing bad fruit, it means there's been a disconnect somewhere. Amen? So you and I must be alert to these things. Amen? We don't want to associate with individuals that are carnal. That can cause a stumbling block to you. You don't want to associate with them. Why? Associations bring impartations. Same things with everything else. You know, David said, Lord, I won't put anything evil in front of my eyes. He knew that these things would cause him problems. He, of course, he had enough problems himself. You know, David was peeping David at one time. Amen? But he got corrected. And that child, the Lord allowed to die. He wasn't going to bring it in. Everybody all right? Many have fallen from their spiritual senses of alertness by their choices and words manifesting fruits of carnality with human intellect and reasoning. Not able to receive revelation to restrain the flesh. Did you get that all down? <laughs> Second Timothy 2. Hallelujah. I'm going to share that again. Many have fallen from their spiritual senses of alertness by their choices of their own words, manifesting fruits of carnality. With human intellect and reasoning, they're not able to receive revelation. See, because without revelation, the restraints of the flesh are loosened. So they react more than they respond. They react more than they respond. Divine alertness. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself for the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call out of the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle in, to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the what? The truth. And that they may come to their what? Senses or what? Alertness. And escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. 
See, when you and I lose sight in that area, fall back into, and we're not awake, we're not alert, and our senses are not allowing us to see things through, immediately the enemy knows. In fact, he plays people until he, he gets them into that position. He baits them. And one of the things he baits them with to the place of pride. Pride is the number one bait in the area because it's self-promoting, self-promoting, self-promoting. Does everybody understand? Hallelujah. Taken captive by the devil's influence, losing spiritual senses of divine alertness, causing division and strife and disorder, falling out of their own divine order. See, there is a divine order that God is requiring. Amen? Luke 4. Luke 4. And Jesus was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Is everybody there? Verse 18. Everyone speak it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty or freedom to those who have been taken captive. To recovery of the sight of the what? The blind. That's alertness. And set at liberty those who are oppressed by the enemy. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus came to bring eternal presence, power, and truth called the anointing. To restore what was lost in the garden. Two things were lost in the garden. Freedom and sight. Besides salvation, eternal life. Amen. Freedom was lost and so was sight. In fact, that was the main thing the enemy was going after them for. So that they would become blinded. Remember, in the garden, Adam and Eve saw God. They walked with him. They spoke with him face to face. But as soon as they fell, sin separated them from seeing, blinded them. They no longer saw the Lord. That's why the Bible says, and then they heard the Lord walking. No longer did they see him. That blindness is called the veil. That veil has been put on every single human being that comes into this world until you are born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then that veil is removed. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. In verse 10, divine alertness. And I had a dream one time, and I was, I was brought to a, a college, and I was running around shaking everybody. Going, wake up, wake up, he's coming. Wake up, wake up, he's coming. And it was like, nobody could just get it. They were all like, Bleh. they were asleep. Wake up, he's coming. Wake up, he's coming. See, that's what's going on right now. Wake up, he's coming. You don't think this is end time? This is end time, man. We're the generation of the return of the Lord and the removal of the bride of Christ from this earth. And remember, the whole body ain't going, the bride's going. The ones that are, have blemish free. There's a lot of people who call some Christians, but are still carnal. They're still living for themselves. They will not get a ticket home. They'll stay here during tribulation. Ephesians 6.10, let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery or wiles of the devil. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Withstand. Do you need to be alert to withstand? Yeah. Then he says this. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the what? Truth. This is the full armor of God. This is something you go to the Lord. Lord, dress me with your full armor. And you ask him. You speak out every area. Having girded yourself with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one or the voice of the stranger. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in tongues. Does everybody get it? In the Spirit. That's the seventh part of the armor. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And as for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, of the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Full armor of God, praying in tongues, maintaining a divine alertness. Is everybody okay? You know, there's a lot of people that still skip getting dressed with the full armor. Oh, I don't need to know that. God knows me. Yeah, he knows you all right. So does the devil. Acts 28. Acts 28. Endurance. We need endurance, don't we? Endurance. Romans, or Acts 28, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 23. Is everybody there? Acts 28, verse 23. Glory. Let's speak it. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging to whom he explained the solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them according to Jesus, concerning Jesus, from both of the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word, the Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah, the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have what? Grown dull. So Paul was there trying to minister to them. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Powerful. So that I should heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jewish the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no one forbidding him. So he had two years to be able to minister in that place. Was Paul alert? Amen. First John chapter 2. Uh, no, let's go to, yeah, first Romans 13 first. Romans 13. You know, we were all Romans one time. We were Roman for the truth. 
Amen? I was a Roman Catholic. I roamed for the truth for a long time. Didn't know I could have the power to overcome anything. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Romans 13, 8. What does he say? Oh, no one anything. Except to what? Love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, love, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no what? Love does no what? Harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment and the law. Do this knowing the time that has now is high time to what? Awake. In other words, he's saying, look at, we got, it's high time to what? High, high alert time. High alert time. We are in a time of high alert. Awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Love does no harm. High time for divine alertness. So put on Christ and make no access to your flesh. 1 John chapter 2 and then we'll have one more scripture. First John chapter two. Divine alertness. Verse eighteen. Let's speak it together. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Did they bite the bait? Yeah. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you do know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He's Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. See, they're being deceived because they're not alert. And they'll try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. See, the anointing teaches and guides by the Holy Spirit of truth. It brings us into place of perfect divine order and alertness. He wants us to keep awake so we can watch and be ready against all the attacks of the enemy. We have no excuse for not overcoming God has provided everything for us. The problem people don't overcome is because laziness. Deception. They bit in a bait somewhere along the line. They touched something unclean. They're not willing to pay the price. Freedom is a price. There's a cost to our freedom. And that's something that you and I must maintain. It's worth it. I'm going to close with Philippians chapter 2.
Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Everybody there? Let's speak it, please. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Without what? Fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send you Timothy, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. Look at verse, the next verse. For I have no one what? Like-minded who will sincerely care for you for your state. See, God is trying to bring people into like-mindedness. You know, you can trust someone in the area where they think the way you do, as long as you're thinking right. For some of us, we can't trust them. <laughs> see, God is trying to get us into a place where we actually see what he sees. Amen? That's his greatest desire. So he wants me and you to be alert so we see what he sees. He would always say to the prophets, what do you see? What do you see? He says it to his children. What do you see? He says it to me and you. What do you see? He wants to know if we're alert or not. Amen? Divine alertness is available for everyone. We just got to partake. We have to be consistent and press in. I encourage you, worship till you drop. People shop till they drop, right? Praise God. Worship till you drop. When you drop, you're in. Guaranteed. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask for your protection on this word. We apply the blood of Jesus on the seed that's been imparted that the devil will not steal this from anyone. And that it would grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that you would increase our divine alertness. Sharpen our senses, our spiritual senses. And prepare us, Lord, for the things that are coming and that are here right now. That we may avoid and overcome every area of attack in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.